Hello everyone and welcome to another Plexus 2D tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use Plexus 2D to determine the settlement caused by underground tunnel excavation. So for this video, I'll be using this sixth tutorial from the Plexus 2D tutorial PDF. And the main objectives of this tutorial is to model the tunnel boring process and to model undrained behavior using the undrained B option. For those who don't know what undrained B means, it means that we are using the undrained shear strength to define the strength of the soil. So basically we are using undrained parameters to define the soil's strength unlike undrained A. So over here if we scroll down we can see that we have a screenshot here of the geometry of the model that we're going to create in Plexus 2D. So now let's start up our Plexus 2D file. So I'll name this as settlement view to tunnel excavation. Moving on to the model tab here, you can see that if we scroll down, we are using a plane strain model and we are using 15 noded elements here. Plane strain because we are not dealing with anything circular and technically the tunnel is going into the paper or into the screen. So basically plane strain would fit nicely. So now we look at the contours here. So X minimum is set to 0, 0.0 meters here and X maximum is set to 35.0 meters. So I'll put in 0 here and 35. And if you look at Y minimum values, we are using minus 30.0 meters and Y maximum is set to 3.0 meters here. So Y minimum is minus 30 and Y maximum is 3. And if you scroll up to this diagram, you can see that we are using a negative 30 meter depth here. So this corresponds to our Y minimum value and the Y max is set to positive 3 meters. So therefore we have this positive 3 value here and X max is set to 35 because of this dimension here which is the width of the model. So by doing so when we create a borehole log it will created based on these dimensions here. So moving on to the constants tab, we can change the unit weight of water to 9.81. And for the cloud services tab here, there's nothing to change. So I'll just click on OK. And if we look at the PDF, it says that we should create the borehole at x equals to 0 meters here. So left click on the create borehole tool and find x equals to 0. So it should be about here. And as you can see in this screenshot, there are one, two, three, four, four layers here. And the top layer for the clay soil is positive three meters here. And the bottom would be minus 10. And the sand has a bottom at minus 12 meters. And the deep clay layer has a bottom at minus 17 meters here. And the deep sand layer has a bottom at minus 30 meters here. So now that we've already defined all the heights for the four soil layers here, we can look into the materials of the soil being used here. So you can read up on this additional paragraph on your own. For this video I'll just be going through the settings shown in table 13 here. So let's look at the materials. So I'll just import some materials that I've already created beforehand for this tutorial here. So I've already found all four of the materials here. I'll click on this arrow to import them. So let's quickly look into the clay material. We are using a more Coulomb material model along with a undrained B drainage type. Unsaturated and saturated unit weights are set to 15 and 18 kilonewtons per cubic meter respectively. So the general tab for the clay layer is set correctly. Moving on to the parameters tab for the clay layer. It says that the stiffness is set to 3400 kilopascals. So this is set correctly here. Poisson's ratio is set to 0 0.33 and the undrained 
Chair strength at reference level is set to 5 kilopascals here. So this is already set correctly here. Now we need to set the advanced settings for the clay. So we scroll down, we can find the advanced parameters here for the clay. So Young's Modulus Ink and Reference Level is set to 400 kN per cubic meter and 3 meters respectively. And the Andrean Shear Strength Ink and Reference Level is set to 2 kPa and 3 meters respectively. These are set correctly over here. Moving on to the Groundwater tab. And in the Groundwater tab, we can see that the Kx and Ky values are set to 1 times 10 to the negative 4. So I've already set them correctly here. And moving on to the Interfaces tab, we are using a rigid interface strength with uh, our inter value of 1.0. So we've already set them correctly here. And under the Initial tab, we can see that for K0, we are using a manual determination here. And K0x is set to 0 0.60. So that's it for the clay layer. Click on OK. So moving on to the sand material here. So we're using a hardening swell model, which means that we have three values of stiffness. And the drainage type is set to drain. And unsaturated and saturated unit weights are set to 16.5 and 20 kN per cubic meter. So the general tab is set correctly for the sand. Let's move on to the parameters here. So E50 ref and E odometer ref is set to 25 kilopascals, and EUR ref is set to 75,000 kilopascals here, and power is set to 0 0.5. So these are all set correctly here. And the C dash ref is set to 0, and phi and psi values are set to 31 and 1 degree, respectively. Poisson's ratio is set to 0 0.3 over here for the advanced settings. And if you scroll down over here, there are no additional advanced settings for the sand layer. And this applies for the deep sand layer as well. So let's move on to the groundwater tab here. It says that Kx and Ky are set to 1 meter per day, as shown over here. And moving on to the interfaces tab, you can see that we are using a rigid interface strength with a strength reduction factor of 1.0. Moving on to the initial tab, you can see that the K0 determination is set to automatic here, and it is automatically set to 0 0.485, and over-consolidation ratio is set to 1.0, and pre-overburden pressure is set to 0, 0.0. So that's it for the sand layer. So just click on OK, and let's look into the deep clay layer. As you can see, we are supposed to use the Moore Coulomb model here with undrained B material behavior with a unsaturated and saturated unit weight of 16 and 18.5 kN per cubic meter respectively. So, so we've already set the settings correctly for the general tab. Moving on to the parameters tab here, you can see that the Young's modulus for this deep clay layer is set to 9000 kPa. So this is correct. Poisson's ratio is set to 0 0.33 and undrained shear strength is set to 40 kPa. So we can find undrained shear strength here at 40 and we can see that the additional settings are required for this deep clay. So if you look at Young's modulus ink and reference level, it's set to 600 kN per cubic meter and minus 12 meters respectively. So we've already set those accordingly here. And for the strength, we have set for the undrained shear strength ink, we are setting it at 3 kPa here. And the reference level is minus 12 meters here. So it's already correctly set up here for the parameters tab. And moving on to the groundwater tab here, we can see that we are supposed to use a Kx and Ky value of 1 times 10 to the negative 2. These are set correctly over here already. Moving on to the interfaces tab, we are using a manual interface strength with a strength reduction factor of 0 0.7. And for K0 determination, we are using manual settings here and we've keyed in K0x of 0 0.60. And that's it for the deep clay layer. So now let's move on to the deep sand layer. 
So we are using a HS small material model with drainage type set to drain. Unsaturated and saturated unit weights are set to 17 and 21 kN per cubic meter. So as you can see, we've already set up the general tab correctly for deep sand. Moving on to the parameters tab, we can see that we've set E50 ref and E odometer at 42 kilopascals here. And EUR ref is set to 126 kilopascals with power set to 0 0.5. So we've already set those settings correctly here. Moving on to the cohesion constant, it's set to 0. And phi is set to 35 degrees and psi is set to 5 degrees. So we've set them correctly here. And we have to set the shear strain at Gs equals to 0 0.7. 2 g naught at 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4. We've already set that correctly here. And for g naught ref over here, we've set it to 110,000 kilopascals over here. So it's set correctly here. And moving on to Poisson's ratio in the advanced section here, it is set to 0 0.3. And that's it for the deep sand layer. There, there are no additional advanced options. So moving on to the groundwater tab here. We can see that Kx and Ky are set to 0 0.5 meters per day. So it's already set correctly here. Moving on to the interfaces tab, we can see that the manual setting is used and, and the R inter value is set to 0 0.7. So strength is set to manual here and R inter is set to 0 0.7. And in the initial tab, we can see that the K0 value is set to automatic and the default value for K0 X is 0 0.4264 which is the same here and over consolidation ratio is set to 1.0 as shown here and pre overburden pressure is set to 0, 0.0 so let's move on to the structural elements here so let's define our tunnel so i'll just click on ok here and ok and i'll quickly assign the four materials here first layer is the clay material the next layer is the sand the next one is the deep clay and the final layer is the deep sand and I'll click on OK and let's quickly move to the structures tab so I will create the tunnel using the create tunnel button here and I will find the point 0 comma minus 17 so it should be about here so I've already found 0 comma negative 17 here so left click once and for the shape type, we need to use a circular option here. So I'll change this to circular. And as you can see in the screenshot here, we are only defining the right half of the circle. So I will choose define right half. And for offset to begin point, set axis 2 to negative 2.5. So I'll key in negative 2.5 here. And we need to move to the segment tab over here and we need to set the radius to 2.5 meters here so select this radius and key in 2.5 meters so now let us scroll down and we can see that we need to move to the properties tab here so it's over here and now we need to go and select on this section here of this tunnel and right click on it and create plate so as you can see it is not assigned any material so if I click here the drop down box shows nothing because we have not defined any plate materials so I will click on this plus button here to create a new plate material so I will name this as tunnel lining And as you can see, we are using an elastic material behavior with isotropic properties here. Axial stiffness is set to 1.4 times 10 to the power of 7. And bending stiffness is set to 143,000 here. Weight is set to 8.4. Poisson's ratio is set to 0 0.15 and we can ignore all the Rayleigh alpha and Rayleigh beta values here 
and prevent punching is left as unchecked over here so we can click on OK and we've already assigned a material for our tunnel here so all we need to do for this tunnel is to create a negative interface and create line contraction just by right clicking on the segment so I'll just left click then right click on this segment and create a negative interface and create a line contraction here so click on generate and close and now we need to create the plate material for the building so first we need to refer to these values here I will click on the show materials button here and I will go to the plates option click on new and I'll call this as building and as you can see, we are using an elastic and isotropic setting here. And the axial and bending stiffness are equivalent and they are set to 10 billion. And the weight is set to 25. And the Poisson's ratio value is set to 0.0, .0 as you can see over here and prevent punching is left as unchecked so just click on OK so before I actually want to draw the building I'll just change the color so that it'll be easier to see where the building is so click on OK click on OK so it says that we must create the building from 5,3 to 15,3 so I will create the plate from 5,3 to 15,3 over here. So hit escape twice, right click and set the material for the plate. So left click on this plate, right click and set the material for the building here. Now we need to create the foundation piles for our building. So just go to the materials button here and let's click on the embedded beam row option here under the set type click on new and we'll name this as foundation piles and the color will be set to black so that it will be the same color as the building and the stiffness is set to 10 million kilopascals And the unit weight of this pile is set to 24 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Beam type is set to predefined, and predefined beam type is massive circular beam. The diameter of this pile would be 0 0.25 meters here, and the spacing of the piles would be 3 meters here. And we can ignore the really alpha and really beta values here. And moving on to the axial skin resistance, we are using a linear setting here as shown. And the skin resistance at the top of the pile is set to 1 kN per meter. And the skin resistance at the bottom is set to 100 kN per meter. In 1 and 100 here. Lateral resistance is set to unlimited. And base resistance is set to 100 kN over here. And for the interface stiffness factor, it says that we are using the default values here, as you can see. So we need to go and make sure that this checkbox is checked. So click on OK. Click on OK. And referring to the tutorial, it says that the foundation piles will be drawn from 5,3 to 5, negative 11 for one of the piles. And for the second pile, it is drawn from 15,3 to 15, negative 11. So to draw our embedded beam row, we just need to go to the create structures drop down, and we can find create embedded beam row over here. If you don't see a cursor, hit escape twice and retry again. So from 5,3 we are drawing to 5, negative 11 as you can see here and 
we need to draw from 15 comma 3 to 15 comma negative 11 and we need to set the materials here and that's it for the structures of this model here so let us go to the mesh tab here and create the mesh for our model for this example we'll be using a medium setting so just click on ok and we can see that our mesh is generated here already so to view our mesh we can just click on this view mesh button over here and as you can see it looks pretty similar to our screenshot over here it's just that the color schemes are different that's all so we can just close our output program for now and we can move on to the stage construction phase and this is where we have to define the different phases here in the initial phase we are keeping the calculation type as k0 procedure and the water pressures can be generated as a phreatic level so if we double click on the initial phase we can find the k0 procedure as being used and we are using a phreatic pore pressure calculation type and for this initial phase basically we do not need to activate the tunnel or the building so we are assuming that nothing was constructed at this moment in time and now if we move on to the first phase which is the building we just need to activate the building so I'll just click on the plus button here and I'll activate the building using the toggle activation tool and there are some additional settings here so they'll rename it as building and for the deformation control parameter subtree we need to ignore the undrained behavior A and B. So double click on this phase one. I'll rename it as building. And I'll check on this ignore undrained behavior A and B. And that's about it for phase one, which is building. So for phase two, which is tunnel, we need to reset displacements to zero over here in the deformation con control parameters here. So double clicking on phase 2, we need to go and rename it as tunnel. And we need to reset displacements to 0 and click on OK. And we need to activate the tunnel lining and the negative interfaces. And contraction is still not active in this phase. And the soil clusters inside the tunnel are deactivated and set to dry. So I will quickly deactivate the soil in the tunnel first. Then I will set these two uh, soil clusters here to dry. Select to select multiple soil clusters. All you need to do is hold Control and left click, and that's how you can do multiple selections. And now we need to activate our tunnel, but make sure that contraction is not active over here. If you see over here, if contraction is not active, you can see this brown and blue dotted line here. If it is active over here, as you can see, the color changes to a blue-green dotted line over here. So that's how we can distinguish between contraction on and off. So moving on to the third phase. So this phase is called the contraction phase. Basically, it builds on the current phase. So moving on to phase 3, contraction. It basically builds on the second phase. We just need to activate the contraction and that's about it. So selecting both of the plates over here, we can click on line contraction. And I'll rename this as contraction. And click on OK. And scrolling down, we can find the fourth phase over here. So at this point, the tail end of the tunnel boring machine is beginning the grouting process. So I will add a fourth phase here and rename this as grouting. And as you can see over here, we just need to deactivate the tunnel lining. So click on OK and I will use the toggle activation tool and deactivate this uh, 
tunnel lining here. And to simulate the routing process, we need to select the swell clusters here. And we need to use a user defined option here. And it says that P ref is set to negative 230 kilopascals here. And finally, in the fifth phase, we need to do the final lining here. So I'll add a fifth phase and name it as the lining phase. And in this phase, it says that the soil classes inside the tunnel are set to dry. And it is said that the tunnel lining and negative interfaces are activated here. So just activate these two sections here. And as you can see, both sections of the tunnel have line contraction activated. So now we can just select points for curves before we can calculate. So where you select doesn't affect the calculation results. So I'll just select this point here and click on update. And I'll click on calculate here. And as mentioned in my previous videos, the select points or curves will only matter if you are interested in a particular point that you want to have a graph plotted for. So moving on to the results, we can see the screenshot of the deformed mesh over here. At phase 5, they've scaled up to 20 times over here. And we can see that our deformed mesh is very similar. We have this pattern over here for the tunnel. And as you can see, the left part of the building is more deformed than the right part of the building, which is also seen over here. And we can view the axial forces and bending moments in the second phase by just using this tool here to select the plate. And go to the forces drop down here and you can click on axial forces for axial forces. So you can see this pattern over here. And for the bending moments over here, we can just click on forces again and click on bending moment. And we can see this shape over here. And I believe there's a typo here. This should be for the fifth phase because if you are referring to the fifth phase over here, the scale factor is 0 0.2 for the bending moment. But if you're using the second phase over here, the scale is only 0 0.02 times. So I think there might be some error here. I think it should be mentioned as the fifth phase over here because they are using the scale of 0 0.2 unless they're referring to a scale of 0 0.02 instead. But I digress. So we can view this effective principle stresses after the construction of the tunnel just by quickly duplicating this view. We can go to stresses and go to principal effective stresses. And clicking on effective principal stresses will give us the same type of diagram as you can see here. And to display the tilt of the structure, all we need to do is use the distance measurement button over here. And to find the distance measurement button, we can just find it on the left side over here. And it can only be found in the effective stresses view. We can display the tilt of the structure by using the distance measurement button in the side toolbar on the left, which is right over here. And we are to Click on 5 comma 3 and 15 comma 3. So 5 comma 3 is here. And 15 comma 3 is over here. And we can see the results over here. They are very similar to the results shown over here. So the deformed is 4.933 and 2.976. So we have 4.933 and 2.975 here and so on. That's it for this video today folks. I hope that you find this video useful. And if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch more 
Access to the tutorials or Revit tutorials or any other civil engineering software tutorials, do consider subscribing to my channel, it's free. And as always, I hope that you are safe in these unprecedented times. Take care and goodbye.